Tekken has struck a chord with millions around the world as the best and funniest 3D fighter on the market. Does Tekken Tag Tournament 2 keep that chord ringing, or is it time to hang up the gloves, hands, paws or claws? <laughs> this is Deadly In Depth. Tekken Tag Tournament 2 has built on the experience of its previous titles. It, it's brought in all the great old mechanics which haven't changed at its very core. And also they've included many, many, many great new additions for the game. To, to start with, they've got a massive rush to this time. 53 characters are great, a great size. And uh, I've been playing for a very long time now and I haven't even gotten close <laughs> to using them all. My only problem with these characters is that some are the same, like um, Eddie and Christy, they've always been the same, it's something that's really annoyed me because I think Eddie is the cheapest character in the game, right? And now they've included Tiger, which is uh, Eddie's old protege, and this is annoying for me because I feel like even if they are the same style, they should mix them up. It's, why should they all have to do that stupid swingy leg move? I hate it. <laughs> I hate it because I think... Eddie's the only cheap character in the game. Now they've got three of him. <laughs> that makes it annoying for me, especially when I see people playing online with him because I hate it. Um, one, one of the thing that I found annoying about the roster for me is that um, I couldn't play as Gon, which anyone who's played Tekken 3 will know is like an amazing little dinosaur character. It was just great, perfect. Uh, just thing to mess around with. I mean, all you could do is like low or mid hit him because he was so small. Uh, but other than that, though, the characters uh, the character is great. Like when you play through arcade mode, which is still there, um, you get 53 different cutscenes, which is amazing. I mean, that's 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 great. And, and there's lots of different art styles, and the the sort of the Kazama Mishima like bloodline um, stories are a bit more intense than the other ones. But uh, a, a lot of them are quite humorous, and I, I think you know the, the creators know that this game has both sides of it and they want to make sure that they keep that going. Um, the arcade the, the arcade mode consists of you going through nine battles. Uh, the first six are random, uh, so like random tags or you go against a single opponent. And um, you can do a tag or single as well. I found doing it single was more of a challenge. You get to fight the old bosses of some of the other games, so you get to fight Ogre from Tekken uh, 3 and you get to fight Heihachi and Jinpachi, they come as a tag combo, which is really great, and then you fight Jun at the end and her alter ego. She is really annoying because she juggles you a lot if you mess up, which you will do, because as you expect, these, the final character in a Tekken game is always in, uh, insanely uh, either difficult to beat or odd. Like, I hated the Tekken 6 boss, made me want to blow my brains out. But anyway, we're getting off topic. Other offline modes include uh, Team Battle, which I thought was great. You can have up to uh, eight characters like you could before uh, against the CPU or another player. And uh, I found it really interesting because you have up to eight slots and then you pick your team. But because of all the tag combinations, if, if, someone, if someone gets KO'd, you don't lose both of them. You only lose one. So your next person comes in. So you really have to think about what combinations you're going to have them to put together. Survival still remains, and so does Time Attack. Survival, I found, was good. It was fun, but it was, I used to be able to get to like around 100 in like Tekken, I can't remember, Tekken 6 and 5. Uh, but this one, I, I, I'm finding it hard to get to level 10. But maybe it's because I haven't put any, like, I haven't actually really tried at it. Um, time Attack remains basically the same, you know, try and get through the arcade as quick as possible. Um, I saw the the time attack world records are like 2 minutes and 30, I, I have no idea how they managed to do that. The offline mode as, as a whole is great. One of the best parts of it is Fight Lab which is um, it's like a story driven tutorial mode and uh, I'm amazed at how well they did, did it because I learned all the tag moves through there and it felt like I wasn't really learning anything because you feel like you're just going through a story mode and the, what the story is, is character Lee, he's built his ultimate combat but he accidentally deleted it and the whole thing got destroyed and then he had to start from scratch with just the basic standing one which only knows punch and kick which which is what you get at the beginning 
but the greatest part of this is as you're going through it you can customize your combat which means you can make the ultimate fire in the long run which is great and then, then he gets to be in your arcade mode or, or your online mode which i think is amazing i think that's such a good addition but although i'm a bit worried because i feel like someone's going to find sort of the ultimate combo and just be able to knock everyone out but we'll see we'll see uh, other than that you have the online mode which is I, I think it's really good because the matchmaking works very well um, you can pick how much lag leniency and uh, how different you want their level to be than you and there's even a practice area before the fighting begins this is this is very good the, the only problem I have is that people have started uh, spamming the tag grab moves which is very annoying because they're hot they're not easy to block do you know what i mean they're, they're, it's become uh, i hope it doesn't become a prevalent issue is what i hope the tag the tag grab spamming doesn't bother me that much when i consider how good all the new mechanics are though because the tag grab combos are incredibly well put together and you have to think about which characters you're going to use together to pull off the best combo which means people who you'd imagine favourably working together might not be the best combination. Like uh, I often use um, the Taekwondo kicking man, um, Rang, something like, or however you say his name, and uh, either Jin or uh, one of the Laws. Uh, and I find that a, a good combination because you can you can slam him uh, with Harang and then juggle him a bit with lore and then when he comes back to your original character you can knock him up in the air still again and it takes a huge chunk of health and it's just things like that two people you might not have put together you just think about it for a little while and have a go and then voila I got a massive like I found out how to get one massive combo I mean I would suggest you try it yourself or they don't do it online those are my characters mine <laughs> but I think finally we're down to the important bit is this worth your hard-earned money? Is it worth it? And I'd have to say, yeah, it, it really, really, really is. It's probably, I think, probably the best Tekken game. The, my complaints are only minor, after all. The thing is, I, I feel like a lot of people are going to review it and not understand that there are problems with it. There's problems with every game, and there's nothing you can do about that. But fortunately, these ones are very minute. It's, it's mainly a player problem for me. So... Yeah, I'd say pick it up. Pick it up today, and I'll see you online, but don't expect to win. <laughs> All right, bye, guys.